So now in this video, we're going to discuss a second uh, reference or standard electrode. And this is the silver silver chloride uh, standard electrode where uh, these terms are referring to the half reaction where silver chloride is reduced uh, to give solid metallic silver and a chloride aqueous byproduct. Um, so in this reaction, uh, it's said to have a potential of 0 0.222 volts. Uh, and that potential can be changed slightly uh, by changing the concentration of chloride, which we will talk about in a minute. Um, so silver, of course, is starting in the plus one oxidation state since it's bound to a more electronegative metal or non-metal, excuse me, halide chloride. And chloride remains a negative one. Uh, it's inert here in the redox process. Um, however, silver accepts one electron to go from positive one to zero. Now, it turns out that silver chloride and in general, silver halide salts are incredibly insoluble in water. We'll find that that silver halide uh, will form a paste and remain on the surface of the metal electrode. It refuses to dissolve in water. So uh, once again, I'm going to show you an example for how this can be applied. Um, <clears throat> so if we once again make our standard solution uh, or half cell, it's a reference half cell, a uh, anode where oxidation is occurring, then the reverse of the above reaction will occur where chloride reacts with silver and those form silver chloride and that gives a free electron as a product. So that's the oxidation uh, or the reverse of the reduction reaction written above. Once again, both silver and silver chloride are insoluble in water, while free chloride is an aqueous ion. So this time uh, our indicator electrode with a variable composition uh, is going to be the cathode where reduction occurs. And let's say that we use the same copper two example where it's reduced with two moles of electrons to give copper zero in the solid metallic form. So, uh, the identities of the electrodes are copper on the left and silver on the right. And as the reaction proceeds, uh, silver chloride is formed as a product, but that product is going to accumulate on the surface of the silver electrode. And that's what we refer to as the silver chloride paste, or it's insoluble in solution. So chloride is building up in concentration in solution, um, or it could be depleted depending on which way this reaction goes given the sign of each cell. However, uh, we want this standard to have a fixed composition. So for it to have a fixed composition, that means we need to have fixed concentrations of the aqueous ion because that will affect Q, which affects E cell. So we fix this chloride concentration with excess 
potassium chloride, which is a highly soluble ion in solution. Or this is saturated, which means that we put a ton of potassium chloride in this solution to the point where it no longer dissolves and it sits simply uh, as a solid at the bottom of the solution. And any time that a chloride ion is consumed by the oxidation of silver to silver chloride, and we lose one of these chlorides from solution uh, to make the paste, then this chloride will dissociate from potassium uh, to regenerate that. So in other words, it will fix the concentration of chloride. And if it's fixed, when saturated, that changes the product uh, to reactant ratio such that the reduction potential or the standard reduction potential actually changes to become 0.197 volts, a little bit uh, lower of reduction potential relative to um, the 0.222 volts. Now it's ideal to use potassium chloride to fix this solution uh, simply because potassium and chloride are going to minimize what's called a junction potential. And we'll talk about the definition and the problems associated with a, a junction potential in a later video. Um, but just know for now, that's the ideal salt to use. Once again, you'll connect the two with a wire and electrons will travel from the anode towards the cathode under standard conditions. Um, and the standard potential of this cell is the cathode or the reduction potential of copper, which is 0.34 relative to the standard hydrogen electrode. But relative to the saturated silver silver chloride electrode, uh, we have to subtract 0.197 volts as the anodic reduction potential. So subtracting those is going to give a lower potential for copper relative to the silver silver chloride electrode as compared to the standard hydrogen electrode. So this is 0.143 volts. So if you were to have an E cell reading of, let's say, 0 0.095 volts for the reduction of aqueous copper to solid copper, right? This is lower than the standard potential. So we must have some concentration of copper cation that is uh, non-standard. You could relate these, right? You could use the Nernst equation again, where you say the non-standard potential, 0 0.095, is equal to the standard potential, 0.314, minus 0 0.0592 over n multiplied by log of q. If n is known, then q can tell us something about the unknown concentration in the indicator solution. So keep in mind, copper is reduced by two electrons, but silver only loses one upon oxidation. So we need to double this, two chlorides, two silver, two silver chlorides, and two electrons as products. So N is equal to two in the balanced reaction. And the expression for Q is going to neglect um, the solid products. And this is a mistake here. This silver chloride should be solid, right? That's the green paste that's building up along the silver surface right here. So both the products are neglected. And we simply have the aqueous reactants, chloride and copper. So Q is one over the copper concentration multiply by the chloride concentration squared. But this chloride is fixed. 
with potassium chloride. And so you, then you can solve for this unknown solution and its composition or its concentration of copper two, because all the other variables of this Nernst equation are satisfied. Once again, the final part of course is to maintain electro neutrality uh, or prevent charge buildup using a salt bridge. And that salt bridge allows anions that are highly soluble from their cation counterparts to migrate towards the anode while potassium ions uh, migrate towards the cathode. Other ions can be used potentially in the salt bridge. Okay. So uh, we have a slightly different standard voltage uh, compared to the silver silver chloride as opposed uh, to the standard hydrogen electrode. But the silver silver chloride can be used to measure an unknown concentration or to determine chemical identity in the cathodic solution, uh, similarly to how the standard hydrogen electrode was used. The setup is similar. The composition of the anode uh, here does differ. OK, uh, so for more practice uh, with the silver silver chloride, uh, problem solving voltaic cells and potentiometry in general, you can visit either the unit for electrochemistry portion of my analytical course guide, or you can visit uh, the general chemistry unit in my, uh, like, or the electrochemistry unit in my general chemistry course guide, excuse me, uh, both of which are available at chemguides.com.